point for Colby. Final seconds. Bryant for the win. Bang! Are you made for this? This is the type of moments that I live for. You gotta show. Five Five I told you you gonna get it, man. You gotta show them. That was Kobe Bryant. He is Jalen Rose. I am David Jacoby. We are Jalen and Jacoby. What is it that we do? We give the people what they want. Of course, we're going to talk about the uncertainty that is the future of Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. Of course, we're going to discuss LeBron's 46-point explosion in Cleveland. But today marks the one-year anniversary of the tragic passing of Kobe Bryant. So we will celebrate him to start the show. And Jalen, you will always be linked with the career and accolades of Kobe Bryant because you had a front row seat for his 81 point performance while you were with the Raptors. But instead of being sad about this, you made light of this during your pilot, Jalen versus everybody. Let's watch that clip. Jalen. Oh no. Hey, Cole, how you doing? How retirement treating you? It's great, man. It's great. Just, uh, you know, a little writing, a little investing. Nice. So I don't know if you saw the thing on Twitter about your statue. Uh, you know, I don't pay attention to that stuff. Man. Yeah, I figured that. Me either. A drink, Mr. Bryant? Yeah, I'll have a, uh, a, a vodka martini. How many olives would you like? 81. Really? Nah, man, I'm just playing. Just two. Joke for him. He gets it. (laughs) Jalen, you played against Kobe Bryant in the finals. You played against Kobe Bryant dozens of times. However, it is this one night, this one evening in which he scored 81 points on you that will forever link the two of you. What does that feel like now that he's tragically passed away? Uh, and man, we we lost a, 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 an icon who just so happened to play basketball, Jacoby. And when people celebrate his 81 point game, I don't want them to only pay attention to the finality of the numbers and the result, but how he comported himself the entire time. So many times we get used to the roar of the crowd and everybody focuses on the oohs and the ahs and the killer crossover and thumping their chest and pointing at the sky. He was having a game of his life, Jacoby, and he was so very locked in that not only did he not say anything, he didn't do any taunting or showboating because in a professional basketball game, when you do that, then the opponent that you're torching like he was doing it against us, probably decides, you know what? Let's double, let's triple, let's quadruple. Let's do whatever we can to make sure he don't get 60, 70, 80. But he is so very dominant and he was so locked in, we had to take it. it. It was like death by a thousand cuts. And the beauty of it, Jacoby, no highlights. Kobe Bryant is one of the greatest high flyers that this game has seen. You're going to see so many clips of him uh, in dunk contests, game dunks on people, off two feet, off one foot, reverses, backwards. None of that in that game. None of that in that game. People just show him walking to the bench doing like this because that was the Mamba mentality. Stay locked in. You're a golfer, Jacoby. It was like him against the course. We were just pieces in his big chess game. And I want people, when they pay attention to the legacy of his greatness, that was a culmination of so many other things because success only be- success only becomes before work in the dictionary. So there was a period of time during that season, Jacoby, where he was like scoring 40 in a row for like a week straight, two weeks Mm -hmm. straight. And then he played against the Dallas Mavs and he had 65 points in three quarters. And that year, they went to the NBA Finals. 
They were really good. Our team didn't make the playoffs. And how about his final game? Only Kobe Bryant in the final game of his career, he didn't just go out and score 10 or 20 or 30. He scored 60 in his final basketball game. We talk about who's a bucket so very often, right? Michael Jordan is the original. Kobe Bryant is the remix. And there won't be a spitting image as close to MJ again as Kobe Bryant. The way he walked, the way he talked, the way he played on the post, boxes and elbows at mid-range, the way he shot the three, the way he just loved the game and had a competitive spirit. That's what you just saw in that commercial. I said, hey, Cole, how's retirement treating you? And shout to Nanachka Khan and Melvin Marr, the producers of Jalen Versus Everybody. What did he say? Doing a little writing, doing a little investing. And he went on to win an Oscar, as you know. And one of our brothers from this show is a part of Kobe's team, his production team, right? Mm-hmm. And so... I've always had an amazing kinship towards watching him grow from being somebody that got drafted in 1996 to accomplish so very much in his amazing career. And it was an honor to be a bug on a windshield the night he scored 81 points against well, the Jaylen, Toronto Jalen, you're Rock. always going to be linked to Kobe Bryant, but we want you to be forever linked to Kobe <laughs> Bryant because we, we know he's going to get a statue outside Staples, and we really feel it's appropriate just that you're there, you know, because you've always kind of been a foil to his greatness, especially during that 81-point game. So that is our proposal for the statue the that, will inevitably be, <laughs> that will inevitably be outside the Staples Center in time. Now, Jalen, um, while we were playing this, there's one thing that you really wanted to point out was the journey that was Kobe Bryant's NBA career because a lot of people focus on the championships and the successes alone. A lot of people forget just how young Kobe Bryant was and what those early years in the NBA were like for him. Why was that so important you to put a highlight on? Well, navigating turbulence when the NBA was still a grown man's league. This was before the true influx of young players coming out of high school and or one and done players. So here you have a guy that's a teenager playing with adults that's probably doing things after the games like going to clubs and hanging out and he's just not old enough. And then also not growing up his entire life in America, he wasn't the normal, he wasn't the normal American kid. He mm. spoke multiple languages, he was, uh, extremely astute, a student of the game. His father, Joe Jellybean, played in the league. So he grew up around the game and had a fascination of actually letting people know that I wanted to be the greatest of all time. And initially, that rubbed people the wrong way. Not only in the league, Jacoby, you remember, or media, but also his teammates. There were a lot of people jealous of Kobe Bryant. And he wasn't starting for his own team, but he started in the All-Star game. And then they played a playoff game in Utah. He shot a few air balls late in the game, and people wanted to test how he was going to respond to that failure. Yep. And he responded with flying colors as a young player, winning three championships in the early 2000s. Look back at the numbers Kobe was getting in 2000, 2001, 2002 against the Spurs. They're a dynasty too. And oh, yeah. they were also in the West from 99 to like mid 2015 or so. It was basically Shaq, Kobe, Dirk, or Tim Duncan that won the West until Stephen and the Splash Brothers came. And so not only were they winning the championship, Look at the numbers that Kobe was averaging against them. He was averaging like 40. He was like 22. And so for him to be accomplishing what he was accomplishing on such a very grand stage with all of the big figures, you had Dr. Jerry Buss, you had Los Angeles Lakers, you had Jerry West, you got Phil Jackson, you got Shaquille O'Neal, you got the backdrop of all of the great players from the history of the Lakers. And his goal was to exceed that. 
That was the Mamba mentality. Yes, it was. And obviously, he partnered up with Shaq and won those titles they won together. But it was the titles that he won after Shaq left that just had a different feel to them because they felt like Kobe Bryant shows versus the ones he won in partnership with Shaq. Well, the elephant in the room is that when he and Shaq parted ways, a lot of people in the public and the media sided with Shaq because mm. he was the dominant figure and he was the guy that was finals MVP three straight seasons. And the team chose and Dr. Jerry Buss to roll with the future of Kobe Bryant. And so not only did he have to overcome that, but he still had to rebuild the Lakers because what was going to happen with Phil Jackson? And then all of a sudden, he wrote a book. And then before you know it, there's a Kobe Bryant won championships with Phil, who also did it with his idol MJ. And then you got Shaq and him accomplished so much. But publicly, they're not, and privately, they're not seeing eye to eye. So finally, for Phil to return and him to win the championships with Powell, those were like his babies because Shaq had won it with the Miami Heat and he made a rap verse and things happened and they played on Christmas Day when he had D-Wade. And Kobe overcame all of that turbulence to rebuild his name, rebuild the Lakers brand and be a two-time champion, Jacoby. And that now really Valid, revalidated that he could get it done without Shaq because you and I both know that was a question that people asked a lot based on mm -hmm. his style of play and based on the fact that he was a fierce competitor with his teammates and then challenging them every day in practice and in games. A question he answered with two titles without Shaq. And Jalen, as we bring this celebration of the life of Kobe Bryant to a close, is there one story that you want to tell, something that happened outside of the eye of the cameras that you want to share with you and Kobe Bryant? I probably shouldn't tell this story. Like, it don't make me yes, look should. good at all. But, like, so it, I got drafted in 94. He got drafted in 96, playing ball at the men's gym. And afterwards, it's like being young in the league. It's like, what do the OGs do to have longevity? So they go to the spa. They get a massage. And, you know, they try to do what they can to make their body recover. So Kobe and I went to Santa Monica and did that, Jacoby, after a workout. Mm -hmm. But when we got finished working out, I was ready to kick it in L.A. and get it in. He went back to UCLA and did a second workout. And I didn't even realize this was happening for weeks. And that just shows you how that man had a different level of dedication. Once you live from the South Street Seaport, Pier 17 to be exact, and brought to you by Chase. Welcome back to Jalen and Jacoby Jalen. Gentleman by the name of LeBron James went to Cleveland and put on an Cleveland! absolute show last this night. 46 for points. You. Seven threes, but doing it in so many different ways. Two breakout dunks, just like the one you're seeing right there. Jalen, what did you think about the Kings' dominant performance against his old team? I appreciate the fact that LeBron James, on a simple weekday night at Cleveland, a team that has Colin Sexton, who's been terrific, and shout to my brother Andre Drummond, a continued JRLA supporter. I got love for him. He was a great Detroit Piston. Show up and show out for the fans. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. When you go back to your home turf, you don't just play the game, you dominate. I appreciated that watching League Pass last night, Jacoby. Shooting it from deep, getting steals in transition, underhand scoop layups, a season high in points. The King delivered and the work that he's putting in, dog. These Lakers, is anybody going to take two games for them in the playoff series? I don't know. Will, will they well, go six? Did they go six in the finals? I don't think they'll go six this year. Like, that, that's what I'm seeing from the King. They did go six in the finals, thanks to Jimmy Butler's game five performance. But as you saw there, only Kobe Bryant at that age in that uniform has scored more points great performance Jamal from the king Crawford. last night 
He did his yep. last year. Why he ain't yes, he in the did. league? Still not in the league. He had 51 just last year. <laughs> last year. <laughs> well, Jalen, the Nets and the Heat had the second of their two game series and the Nets came out on top. Now you see there, James Harden had 20 points, but it was interesting to see what Harden's been doing. He's become sort of a distributor. He only had 10 points at the end of the third quarter and he's been getting a lot of assists. What do you think about this Nets offense with the three superstars? Well, she, the Heat were shorthanded. Shout out to mm -hmm. Kyrie Irving, representing the Black Mamba jersey to the fullest. And while you see him as a, 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 a round six foot or so guard, in his mind, he's a scorer like Kobe. And so for KD, who has always been a prolific scorer, the person without the championships that happens to be the best distributor has to be the person to sacrifice. In this case, that's James Harden's offense, his field goal mm -hmm. attempts, his isolation attempts. And so that's got to be what it's going to do. That, that's got to happen in order for the make, to make this thing tick. And I'm pretty sure he's up for that sacrifice because this is what he wanted when he asked out of Houston. Absolutely. I'm glad you mentioned the field goal attempts because in the last two games, these two games against the Heat, he has had nine field goal attempts in one and ten field goal attempts in another. He used to do that a quarter. A quarter. I love this James Harden because we all knew that something had to give. Not everyone's going to score 30 points every night. It just seems like James Harden has said, you know what, whatever it takes to win, if I have to set these great scores up with passes, that's exactly what I will do. Congratulations to the Nets on this win. Now, Jalen, Sports media is a buzz today, Jalen Rose, at the idea that after a playoff loss, a devastating playoff loss, Aaron Rodgers said, I don't know what's next. My future's uncertain. Now, Jalen, when I see this, I say, this is a quarterback who had the number one seed in the NFC, is going to get the MVP trophy, and lost a close game to a good team. I don't see this as someone who's going to leave their team. Is this just buzz? Is this just a reaction after a loss? Or do you think there's a legitimate chance that Aaron Rodgers will not be the starting quarterback for the Green Bay Packers next season? As you can see, I'm between hairstyles and I'm wolfing. Even mm -hmm. this got me pulling my hair out, Jacoby. It really does. So let me get this right. You got a Hall of Fame quarterback who's going to win MVP this season, this season that has won a Super Bowl for your franchise that you're not consulting? When you make draft picks, that you're not consulting whether you should go for it on fourth down or not? The disrespect. If y'all really wanted him to look bad, you know what y'all should have did? Fail on fourth down, not kick a field goal. Y'all actually now got us looking at y'all because we're trying to figure who thought that Tom Brady couldn't get 10 yards in four downs when he got nine yards on the first down. Like, and, and, and so Deshaun Watson and so many quarterbacks are gonna change teams this year, Jacoby. I believe that this is probably gonna be the off season from one year to another where you see the most starting quarterbacks that have changed teams from opening game. Well, one of those quarterbacks, I believe, will not be Aaron Rodgers. I think that was just a difficult time to ask somebody about their future coming off a playoff loss because he is the MVP. They had the number one seed. Up until that game, everyone's saying Matt LaFleur and Aaron Rodgers are a perfect match for each other. They're in lockstep on all decisions. I think that he will be back with the Packers next season. I've been wrong before. We'll see if I'm wrong again. But, Jalen, something is going to happen that we've been talking about for years now. We have an update on the status of the Harriet Tubman $20 bill. Make sure you stay tuned for that and more. Jalen Jacoby comes back right after this.